Ten years ago, the United Nations thought that they could free the world from the harmful influence of drugs. By 2008, they aimed to have wiped out or significantly reduced drug use, as well as the illegal growing of coca, cannabis and opium worldwide. Now we face the question, have we really done it? What has the war against drugs in fact achieved? At $320 billion, the turnover from trade in illicit drugs by far outstrips the oil and gas market. It is estimated that 208 million people use illicit drugs each year. Among them, 13.2 million are injecting drug users. The number of people in prison for drug-related offences continues to rise steadily, all at a huge cost to the individual, their family and society. The United States is the largest incarcerator of drug users. Few prisons, if any, are drug-free. HIV levels among inmates are much higher than among the total population. Although prisoners might have access to drugs, it's unlikely they'll always have access to clean needles. Drug users with HIV are often refused antiretroviral treatment on account of their drug use and are pushed out to the margins of society. They experience fear, shame, loneliness and isolation. Over the last 10 years, the amount of opium produced worldwide has doubled. In Afghanistan, as many as 193,000 hectares are covered in poppy fields, despite aggressive crop eradication campaigns. In 2007, 92% of the world's opium was grown here. In Latin America, the coca plant is widely grown, easy to pick and transport. Many peasant farmers rely on this crop to make their living. The coca leaf is not only the raw ingredient of cocaine, but also holds great cultural significance. Military-like attempts to destroy coca crops have resulted in poverty, violence and harm to the environment. Back on the street, cocaine is a fraction of the price it used to be and is no longer the drug of the elite. As the drug barons continue to rake in the cash, it's the peasant farmer and the drug user who bear the brunt of law enforcement measures. In several countries of the former Soviet Union, police officers are reported to place illegal drugs on known drug users. By doing this, they are able to inflate statistics of arrests made each month. Sometimes, officers will sell on or use the confiscated drugs themselves. Methadone has been used for over 30 years to successfully treat drug addiction worldwide, but in Russia it remains illegal. As drug users have little access to effective treatment, levels of HIV among drug users are alarmingly high. In China and Vietnam, thousands of drug users are sent to mandatory treatment centers every year where they are forced to work or spend their days in cramped cells. These centers do not offer any treatment which meets international standards. Instead, people are punished for their drug use inside what resembles a labor camp. In the United States, the proportion of African Americans in prison on drugs-related charges is much higher than for white Americans. While drug use among the two groups is comparable, a black male is 12 times more likely to be imprisoned on a drugs-related charge. Again in the United States, criminalizing drug use during pregnancy discourages women from seeking prenatal care and drug treatment. Pregnant women who test positive for illegal drugs give birth handcuffed to their beds. Afterwards, mothers are separated from their newly born babies and sent to prison. To fight the problem of drug addiction from an early age, sniffer dogs are sent around classrooms to detect any illegal substances. School children are required to give urine samples to prove that they are not using illegal drugs. Compulsory drug testing in schools creates a culture of suspicion and fear and infringes a child's right to privacy. A few years ago, the Prime Minister of Thailand launched the war on drugs, declaring that there was nothing under the sun the Thai police couldn't do to make Thailand drug-free. Many of those executed in 2003 were not drug dealers, but past and present drug users or people with no drug-related history. 
So the war against drugs is often a war against drug users. To avoid countless human rights violations, all drug treatment and public health interventions must be evidence-based. As a society, we need to speak honestly about drug use and find realistic solutions for drug users and farmers who grow illicit crops. Law enforcement must draw a clear distinction between drug users and drug dealers. Overdose prevention, needle exchange and substitution treatments such as methadone should be widely available. Only by fully respecting human rights can we find an answer to drug use worldwide. To change the situation, we all must engage. Do you know your national drug policy? Do you agree with it? You can find more information about international drug policy on the sites of these organisations.